so it, Tomcat comes into action when we try to access UCM administration GUI, OS GUI, CCM user GUI, and DRS GUI, serviceability as well. Tomcat from 8.5 and later releases is also has replaced the directory certificate which used to be there and is used to integrate security or LDAPS with X.500 compatible LDAP servers. Now, in case of CUCM or any other UC application, Unity Connection, UCCX, it redirects from an HTTP to HTTPS. That is, even if we do not want to go to that URL, it automatically will eventually redirect it for security purposes. Now, uh, we have a small demo here coming up, which will demonstrate that uh, Tomcat in action, and then how Tomcat really pitches in in terms of the communication manager security. Right, so my call manager, my communication manager is at this URL. I'll try to access it and, and, and uh, mind it. I'm using the, if you notice, I'm using HTTPS, and right away I get, there is a problem with this website security certificate. So that tells me that this is not a URL I should ideally trust, like you go to Amazon or you go to eBay. The, at that, both When you try to do an e-commerce transaction, you usually never see this because you already have in your certificate store, that is your browser certificate store. So if I go to options and then look at the certificates, so there are already a number of public CA uh, certificates which are there. So if I look under trusted root certificate authorities, you can see numerous certificates right there. And somewhere we'll also see, so we have Entrust, Geotrust, GoDaddy, and then there should be VeriSign. So we have Class 1, Class 3, Trust Network. So all in all, we have multiple CA authorities root certificates in our browser store so that we never happen to hit this error page. Now, what if I want to ensure that anyone within my enterprise accessing the CUCM web page, whether that's an administrator or a service group or an end user does not get this error? What do I need to do there? I need to sign the Tomcat certificate and ensure that my browser trust store has the root CA certificate in it. To do that, what I do need to do is I need to go to the I'll sign into the OS administration of so I'll I'll keep distance between IE and Mozilla here. I'll do all the work in Mozilla and show you from the IE that how we are getting over this error. So under security, there is that option of certificate management. I'll go there. Click on find. So there are all my certificates. Now what I'll do is I'll generate a CSR. And what I want to do is right there. So I have Tomcat. I'll click on generate a certificate signing request because I want to sign it using my trusted CA. That is a trusted CA for my enterprise. That could be an internal CA or, a, or an external CA. So it says success, certificate signing request generated. I'll click close. And now there's a new option here, as you can see. There is download CSR. So I'll click on it. I'll say, now this is, mind it, I'd uh, be sure that it's Tomcat. So I, I, you could generate multiple CSR, so you have to choose, pick and choose between what you are generating and what you're downloading. So I'll click download. I'll open it with Notepad for now. And here is my CSR. So as you can see, this is CKCS or base 10, and it's by default in TEM. So I'll just copy this text, and then I'll go to my CA server. So this is a Microsoft CA server I have installed on Windows 2008. I'll go to Search Serve. So what I'm going to do is, first up, I'm going to download the CA certificate, because this is my CA server. So I'm going to download the CA certificate. Save it. Name it as certificate, just to identify between identity and CA, so it becomes a bit easier. 
and I'm done here. Go back. And the next step would be I'll say request certificate. So there are two options, either a user certificate or an advanced certificate request. I want to go for advanced certificate request because I want to tell what template I want to use for this specific certificate. So it says here create and submit a new CA certificate request or request by base 64 encoded, which is what I had previously, or the PCS 10 file. So I'll click this one. So here I'll paste the content from my Tomcat certificate. Now pay attention to the certificate template we are using because this is essential. If you get this wrong, you're going to get the wrong type of certificate and it's not going to function. So essentially what we want to do here is we want to do a web server certificate because we're doing it for Tomcat. And there are no additional attributes, so I'll say submit. So here it says your, the certificate you requested was issued. So I can download the certificate or I can download the certificate chain. This is useful when you have multiple intermediary CAs or subordinate CAs. But in my case, I have an enterprise CA which I have direct communication with. So I'll download the certificate, save it. I'm going to name it as identity certificate. Right. So now what I have here is a CA certificate and an identity certificate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, okay, I'm going to come back to my desktop. Let's minimize all these windows. And I'll just paste the certificates over here. I'm going to go back to the web page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload the certificate here. And first I'm going to upload the certificate at Tomcat Trust because that would be the root CA certificate. So that's my CA certificate. I'll say upload. And that's successful. Followed by Tomcat Trust, I'm going to upload Tomcat. And under Tomcat, I'm going to choose the identity certificate, which is now the CA signed certificate. And I'll say upload. Okay, so this one is also uploaded. When I click close, the page will refresh. And now what I have here is I have the CA certificate right there the description I gave, the name. I can even click on it, and it'll show me the information associated with the certificate. That is, the common name of the certificate authority, the domain name, and so on. So this is a CA certificate because, as you can see, this, the common name here matches the common name of the subject, and the issuer is exactly the same. So let me go one step back and click on tomcat.pem. So now this certificate, the common name of the CA authority appears under issuer. However, the subject name is the name of the CUCM. And that's what I want here. That's the identity certificate I got into the browser store of CUCM, not yet in my IE browser store. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to Tools, Internet Options, Content, Certificate. It comes up under Root Trusted authorities, I'll say import, next. I'll browse for the certificate, I have the CA. So we should import the CA certificate into trusted root certificate authorities. So it's going to confirm, where do you want to place the certificate in which trust store? I'm saying place it in the trusted root certificate authorities. Next, finish. It's going to ask me, am I sure I should accept this signature? Let's say yes. Let's say import was successful. And here is my certificate right there. So the issuer, the subject, that's my CA certificate. All looks good. So as a last step, for now I'm going to close the browser window. What I do need to do is, since we replaced the Tomcat certificate, 
we need to restart the Cisco Tomcat service so that it refreshes the cache and accepts the new certificate. It's an essential step. Good enough. So the command is utils service restart. Well, if you're not sure about which service you want to restart, you can also do a utils service list. And we're looking, looking at Cisco Tomcat. So it says the service manager is running. So essentially what the service manager at this point in, in time is trying to do is stop the service and restart the service. So it's stopping. It stopped it. And now it's running again, trying to restart the service. So this will refresh the Tomcat certificate cache, and the earlier certificate credentials will be wiped off, whereas the new certificate keys will be accepted by the trust stores. And here we go. So once it exits this, fair enough. So that's it. So now it's time to test whether we are able to initiate a secure session. So again, I'm going to HTTPS and ensure that Okay, so it says understand this. That means the certificate was initiated. And we should be good with it. Give me a second. Let me get the name for the server. And let's go to an encrypted URL. Getting this. Let me just ensure that the certificate is indeed in the right certificate store. Meanwhile, also, I'll try and install this from here. So what I want to try and do is just try and install the certificate. It's not coming up. That is not expected. Okay, it just came up. For some reason, the Internet Explorer's cache is not refreshing. It's also hanging a bit. When we tried browsing it using Firefox, it did uh, intimidate it that this is something which was not trusted, and we did opt in to go ahead and look for the right certificate, that is, the trusted the certificate. And in this case, we don't 
don't have any quality, so I'm trying down the four tip from here. Leave it in four tip. Right, so this one works fine, connected, verified by. So uh, there is an issue with IE, but here we imported the certificate in Mozilla, and it is verified by APGC PDI, the right certificate we imported right now. So it is being verified by the right certificate. So as you can see, the common name, the organization, so that's the common name of the CA. So there is an issue with this IE trust store, it's, it's not refreshing the cache, but Mozilla accepted it. So now we have secure communication or HTTPS based upon the root CA of our organization to this use here. So coming back to the presentation, the next certificate we are going to talk about is this UCM IPsec certificate, as discussed earlier as well. This certificate is meant for secure communication within the cluster members, which is implicit. We need not do anything. However, this certificate can also be leveraged for certificate-based tunnels, IPsec tunnels, with the endpoints, where the endpoints can be a gateway. Uh, so in that case, the gateway can initiate a pre-shared key-based tunnel, or it can also initiate an IPsec certificate-based tunnel. I'll quickly browse to the US administration just to give you a glimpse as to what the configuration looks like. When we go to certificate security and under IPsec configuration, so here we have an option. We can either choose the authentication method as certificate that is based upon the IPsec certificate which will be exchanged, or we can do pre-shared key, in which case we can provide a pre-shared key. This is a weaker mechanism. Uh, Certificate-based authentication is a stronger mechanism, provided you have a certificate management process. The next type of certificate is a CAPES certificate, wherein the CAPES certificate authority proxy function is used to sign the certificates of all the CUCM clusters members, and it signs the TFTP certificates, the CUCM certificates. So at the end of the day, if you have a phone which is going to leverage security, you can apply a security profile on the phone and have it download a locally significant certificate and a certificate trust list. So certificate trust list list will be downloaded on every endpoint irrespective whether that's a secure or an insecure endpoint when the cluster is in mixed mode. However, only when the endpoint is secure, it will be able to establish a TLS connection to CUCM and an SRTP connection to the other endpoint. The call manager certificate, as we also discussed earlier, is used for exchanging CUCM security status with other applications such as a security SP farm or say a Cisco Unity secure uh, connection for CCP ports. Uh, in that case, we need to exchange the callmanager.pem certificate with that application or an endpoint such as a gateway. Now, in case of TLS proxy, phone proxy as well, the CUCM certificate or callmanager.pem certificate comes into action, and this is the certificate which is exchanged with Cisco ASA.